Hey guys, and welcome to the Great Days Outdoors Podcast Network and this week's special episode, Selecting the Best Shallow Water Anchor Systems. I'm Joe Baia here with Butch Theory and Brian Sin, both hosts of the Alabama Saltwater and Alabama Freshwater Fishing Report, respectively. And, and guys, you know, the reason we wanted to do this show, one, is because we wanted a week off from the fishing report. So we're going to put this out on Thanksgiving week and, <laughs> and give ourselves a week off. But two, there's a lot of options in the market for shallow water anchors. And things have come a long way from what we had to do as kids. And so we wanted to kind of figure out what's out there, how these systems can help you catch more fish, and then talk about some strategies and tactics of when you want to use which option. You know, I want to start it off by saying, you know, Brian, have you had the ability on freshwater to both use shallow water anchor pole and trolling motors? Have you had the ability to use these on freshwater yet? Yeah, you know, I've had the opportunity, of course, you know, growing up fishing here in Alabama, uh, the main thing that we use growing up was trolling motor and honestly man i just had a, a simple anchor system whether it be a rock on a rope or whatever it was to throw out never really had a shallow water system before but i can tell you this every boat i see up and down the road or the majority of them especially the guys that know what they're doing and they're they got them on their boats and so or i know long. or two right so i know it's necessary and i know there's advantage in it so i'm looking forward really looking forward to this episode to learn more about it myself. Well, Butch, I think, you know, like we talk with, with Bobby Abrascato a lot on the Alabama Saltwater Fishing Report, and he was one of those holdouts for the, the anchor pole. You know, he had, yep. why do I need that? You know, and he's told us that since he's put it on his boat, now it's how could I fish without that? You know, he talked about when he was in a scenario where he wanted to be able to quickly deploy his anchor, he was <laughs> putting his boat anchor up on the bow of the boat and just just kicking it off. Uh, whenever yep. he needed to deploy it and it was already tied off and everything and causes a lot of racket, a lot of noise. Somebody has to pull that anchor in too. You know, I think the first thing we're going to do is, is really just define the different type of options that are out there. And, uh, and to do that today, we got a special guest and this is Adam Knowles. Adam, tell us about what you do first with Minn Kota and explain to us the different types of shallow water anchors that are, that are available on the market right now. Hey, absolutely. So thank you for having me. Like you said, my name is Adam Knowles. I'm the associate brand manager for Minn Kota. Um, and in my responsibility list is shallow water anchors. So shallow water anchors can mean a couple different things to different people. So I, I know my first anchor, kind of like the uh, the old chain or whatever. Um, so we basically would fill a coffee can with cement and that's how we kept our boat in place. We've come a very long way from there. And so this kind of means something different depending on what your fishing style is and where you go in the country. So a shallow water anchor can be a digging anchor. So it can be a fiberglass spike that you shove on the ground, basically tie your boat off to that. I've seen almost like a wood clamp with a rope tied to it, where it's just something you clip on a brush, especially for like kayaks and duck boats. But really the most advanced shallow water anchors on the market right now are either electrically or hydraulically actuated. And it's a spike that goes on the transom of your boat and it's going to hold you in place. I think I'll, I'll save a little bit more information from there, but those are the, the basics on kind of what a shallow water anchor is. Um, and so obviously with Minn Kota, we have talent, which is going to be electrically actuated. And then the hydraulically actuated option just recently launched as Raptor. Awesome. And, you know, I think also one thing we'd be remiss not to talk about is the fact that you can use a trolling motor essentially as an anchor feature, like Minn Kota has an anchor feature on a, a several of their models. And I mean, I, I, a lot of the guys offshore uh, are using those to hold up on bottom spots, fish structure, deep water structure. A lot of the guys inshore, I mean, Butch, you were it's just a game changer. About this how, is, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, this is how we came up with this show. Um, uh, I've recently acquired a new vessel and I've never had a trolling motor in my life. And it is an absolute game changer to be able to hit the anchor mode. And that joker locks down and you're, you're anchored. I mean, it's, it's a complete game changer. And that's what came up with the idea of this show. It's like, you know, do I need a, a pole sort of system and why and what application could I use either or? And are there advantages and disadvantages to either one? Yeah. So, I mean, Adam, you know, thinking along those lines, you know, Butch, he, he's talking about his setup. He's got a trolling motor with spot lock. And right now he's sitting there going, he's seeing those other boats out there with that pole anchor. And he's thinking, do I need this? How would I use this? So first off, like, 
what what are the pros of of spotlight i mean are there any ne- what are the negatives i guess is what we should say i mean the kind of go through pros and cons of using just using a trolling motor with spotlight absolutely so i think the the list of pros is going to far outweigh the list of cons but from a spotlight trolling motor perspective and i don't know what you have butch but really it, we're not always talking about the three thousand dollar motor that i think you know you see in the ads all the time Minkota has been making gps anchor trolling motors um i pilot and i pilot like trolling motors for 15 years now um basically the least expensive one you can get right now is 11.99 um so really entry price point where you can hold your boat um basically in any depth of water and so if you think about it the, i think the key benefit of a trolling motor with spot lock is you're really completely untethered by the depth of the water um and so i think there's really no other anchor that's like that, whether you're talking about a talent or a raptor that's connected to the boat, there's a limited depth, but you're also limited by how much rope you have with the traditional anchor. You guys being closer to the salt water, have you ever seen somebody take a two by four and jam it in rip rep to try and anchor their boat because it was too deep for their anchor? Well, you don't have to do that when you have spot lock. Basically, you hit a button and it's going to use GPS to keep you in a single spot. Um, I would say the, the one thing that maybe you have to consider when you're using a uh, spot lock enabled trolling motor is that it's only going to anchor the bow of your boat. Um, and so you're a little bit subject to wind. So if you care what direction the boat is facing, um, you don't necessarily have that control when you're using spot lock because it's only going to keep the bow of your boat in one place and the stern is going to be able to swing around a little bit. I would say, conversely, um, there are a ton of benefits to shallow water anchors um, in a little bit shallower water. Um, and there are a ton of different scenarios where you would be able to go and say, this makes sense for spot lock, this makes sense for a shallow water anchor. I think the key things with the shallow water anchor is one, it's going to be a little bit quieter. So if you're in something with silt, um, you're not going to have a motor swinging around um, and disturbing like the bottom. Um, for bedding fish, obviously, I think that's one of those scenarios where it comes up a lot. But also, I would tell you, my wife probably loves my shallow water anchors more than I do um, because all I have to do when I launch the boat is I launch it, put the poles down, and that's kind of the end of it. Um, nobody has to hold a rope. Nobody has to, you know, worry about anything. And I can basically get my boat in the water in 20 seconds and go do the work that I need to do on the truck and grab the kids and all that stuff. And we don't have to tie off or anything like that. Great point. I know a lot of uh, divorces that have started in launch and ramp situations. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I mean, you know, you're right, though. I didn't think about it. It's, it's funny how you don't think about the different uses for one. And But we've seen that, but, you know, fishing with the inshore guys is they pull up to the dock and they just they just drop their pole anchor and they're not even yep. tying up to the dock. You know, if you're just going to unload some fish, unload some coolers and do that kind of thing. I mean, theoretically, I guess, Adam, if you had both, you could have your boat held off of the dock power, you know, put your poles down and then bring your boat back to the dock whenever you needed it via the, the trolling motor as well. And I would say I use both every time that I'm on the water. And that's not a sales pitch. It, it truly is something that I use all the time. Um, and it's kind of dependent on where you are in your fishing journey. Um, but for me in Wisconsin, basically we have shallow water and we have really, really deep, clear water. Um, and so the first thing that I do every time I launch my boat is I use my now raptors, I mean, to hold the boat while I go and park the truck and do everything else. And a co-angler doesn't have to worry about anything. I know that it's going to be there when I get back. But you may have seen a couple of years ago when we first launched Altera, which was the first ever, and I believe continues to be the only automatic still and deployed trolling motor. We had a commercial where a guy backs in his boat and you can deploy it from the remote and his he basically drives his boat back to the ramp and steps off and is done with the whole thing. You actually can do that. I mean, there's no, there's no problem with you doing that if you have a trolling motor that stows and deploys itself. And you can do that too if you have an Ultrex or a Tarova where you actually you keep your boat in the bay, spot lock it, and then you use your remote to call it back to the dock. Um, so you don't even have to take up dock space necessarily when you're using spot lock either. So you, you mentioned that using the, the anchor pole, whether that be the Talon or the Raptor, is really for situations where you're trying to manipulate the, the, the direction that that boat is facing. Also in situations where you're in shallow water and maybe dealing with spookier fish like bedding fish. Brian, that makes me think about, you know, uh, I hear you guys talking about fishing bed and bass a lot at certain times of the year. How are the guys fishing the freshwater side? How are they using their trolling motor with all these different features, whether that be spot lock or, I mean, are they able to use this trolling motor to actually keep them on a certain, a certain path, like stay a certain distance off of a bank? How are they using it? 
And Adam, I'm going to throw that question at you to follow up on. And that's what I'm sitting here going through my mind right now, guys, is, you know, here when you're, when we're talking about shallow water fishing, bass fishing, large mouth spots, spotted bass, these guys are usually, they're usually moving pretty consistently in a speed down a bank, whether they're fishing grass or whether they're fishing structure, you know, they'll pull up the structure, stop for a minute, and then they'll move on to the next structure piece. So that's one of the things I was thinking is what's the use for that in shallow water fishing or in your experience and what you're hearing and feedback that you're getting at them are guys pulling up to structure, dropping the hydraulics down or the electrical anchor, you know, in the shallow water, fishing it, coming back up and moving forward. Or are they, I mean, how are they using it for shallow water for bass fishing? I would love to one day do a shallow water anchor masterclass because they're, it seems so simple. You put a spike in the ground and hold it in place, but there's there really is so much more than that. So one thing you can do is if you're on the trolling motor and you're going down a bank and you come up to something that you really want to fish, you can actually put your talons or your raptors down and they'll load up a little bit. And then when they start to swing back, pull them up and you're, it'll pull your boat backwards. So instead of continuing to drift forward and kind of blow into a spot, it'll actually pull you three or four feet backwards um, so you don't blow anything out. One of the really interesting things that I think people kind of, I think, wonder about is situationally between spot lock and using a shallow water anchor. Um, it's not necessarily that spot lock is better in deeper water. And I think that's kind of a common misconception. One of the things that comes up really frequently is current. So you may only be in five or six feet of water, but if you're trying to nose in the current, it's a really good idea to use spot lock because with spot lock, you also have the jog feature. So if you just put your shallow water anchors down, it's a great way to hold you. But then when you want to move five or six feet to the left or five or six feet to the right, you have to go into the entire process of pulling up your anchors and then it becomes manual. And you're wasting time. You're not as efficient on the water. But if you put spot lock on, you're facing straight into the current that's coming at your nose. You're able to cast directly into what you want to cast to, kind of bringing your bait back with the current. And you can jog over five feet to the right, five feet to the right. And so we see this all the time, like on the Mississippi River, there are spillways. You want to work the entire spillway. Um, so you start on one side, you really pick it apart, you cast, you hit jog, move over five feet, continue to cast, um, and you can work an entire spillway and really pick it apart. And I think that's one of the things I hear people talking about a lot is, am I catching all the fish that I'm around? Am I able to be as precise with all my casts? And can I take the time to pick apart the structure that I want to? Um, and I think it's a combination in boat control, both having a trolling motor that allows you to do that and shallow water anchors to keep your pin where you need to, where you really get the opportunity to make the most of your time on the water. And I, I think that's the extra 1% that's going to make your fishing day all that better. Hey, Adam, how, how long does it take to deploy? So let's say I'm in six foot of water going down a bank. I pull up to a spot and I'm, I want to really work this area. How long does it take to deploy and to bring it back up? I wish I could tell you an exact time in, in milliseconds. Um, so there are two different systems, right? So with Talon, we have electromechanical, which is three-stage deployment. Um, they are wicked fast and they go straight down. So it's vertical deployment. What we have with the Raptor is we call it a four bar articulating linkage. Um, and that's hydraulically actually, it actually crab claws off the back. Um, with Raptor, you can actually adjust your speed um, depending on how fast or slow you want to go. So if you're worried about spooking fish or you have, if you're worried about disturbing the bottom or anything like that, you can actually make it a lot slower. So it sort of eases into the water and doesn't have any sort of bottom disruption or slap on the water. Um, for Talon, it's a one single speed setting, but either way, I think, you're not going to be disappointed with how, how slowly it's moving because it's really not like that. It's a matter of instance, not, uh, you're not taking minutes to wait to get anchored. And I'm, yeah. I'm listening to you talk about holding, you know, nosing into the current and then using that jog feature. And Butch, that just makes me think about like when we're fishing these flats and fishing for like speckled trout and whatever, you know, whatever's available. And a lot of times you got schooling fish that are mobile on that flat. They're not really orienting. This happens a lot this time of year, Adam, where you get fish that are orienting to bait. They're not orienting to structure. There's what's the, what they're doing is schooling up and they're attacking that bait and that bait's moving and they're moving with it. And so, you know, in a situation like that, Butch, you and I fish several times where you get on a good bite and all of a sudden it's every cast. And that's in that moment, you want to be anchored right there. But then that can be over with in five minutes. And now you see the birds on top of the bait and they're outside of casting distance and you need to get over there to them. That's, a, that's just immediately what came to my mind is being able to have, if you can use that, 
that trolling motor feature to get there and even hold you in place if need be, that's when that's really going to shine. Having yeah, both, sure. of course, would allow you to even have more more control. It sounds to me like, no doubt about it, it's just having more control of your boat is why you would choose to have both. What if you only are going to choose one? What do you think, you know, is there a reason and where if a guy said, all right, I'm setting my boat up and in the budget this year, I can do a shallow water anchor in the form of, you know, an anchor pole, something like the Talon, something like the Raptor, or I can do a trolling motor. Where would you start? That's a really tough question. And we get this a ton because obviously people have a certain amount of disposable income. They want the best for their boat and they want to set it up properly. The tough thing is everybody has a unique fishing scenario that they're in. And so you'll run into people. So I would say if you fish mainly very deep reservoirs, it probably makes more sense to upgrade to a spot lock trolling motor and try and get 36 volts if you can, get as much power as you possibly can. And if you're going to be fishing no shallow weed flats or if you're trying to mostly stay in shallow water, then I would say probably you're going to lean towards a shallow water anchor like a talon or a raptor. In general, I would say... I, I genuinely do believe this. This isn't a sales pitch. Having both of them on your boat will change the way that you fish, no matter where you are. And I would say the tough part about deciding between these is that they both make such a significant difference in individual scenarios and the ingredients that they help in. And so you get, I think, with a shallow water anchor, it, it's made to do one thing really well. It locks down your boat. And with a trolling motor with spot lock, you also get a lot of advanced navigation features when you get iPod or iPod link through Minkota. So you can also do things like if you get a Lake Master card, you can do follow the contour. Um, you can also, that's provided you have a hummingbird fish finder. Um, but if you have iPod link and you're hooked up to a hummingbird fish finder, you can follow a contour. You can say, hey man, fish in a weed line, it's in seven feet. I'm going to follow the seven foot contour. My trolling motor is going to drive me around and all I'm going to do is cast. And that's all I'm going to think about is landing fish and not piloting the boat. Um, so I think that's one of the few things. There's also a circle mode where you can set a set distance from, you know, it might be a hump that you want to fish and the boat will actually circle around that hump. Um, so you can give the fish a continually different. That's crazy. <laughs> so let, let me tell you my absolute. Do they have mode. a beer mode? So, I want a beer mode. <laughs> Designated driver mode. Right? Yeah. The, the, hit that button. It takes you to the dockside bar. Get That's me cool. home. Right. I didn't realize you were reading our new product development list. Right. Yeah, um, I actually do so have my, a hummingbird, so that's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what kind of trolling motor do you have, Butch? I have the Riptide to Rova, about 24. Nice. Awesome yeah. motor. It's been awesome. Like I, whenever Joe was just talking about that scenario, that's exactly what I did the first time I ever took it out. I've only had the boat for a couple of weeks. Me and Killer Doc Jay that day, we slayed him. I was uh, following a bird school, and literally as soon as we got there, hammered down. So I uh, hit the spot lock. Like Joe was saying, we caught, you know, 15 back to back to back to back and the birds kind of get going and it was blowing about 15 knots right at our bow. So it was perfect for the spot lock. And uh, I just would turn that spot lock off and it would blow us back, you know, 25 yards, catch another one. I hit spot lock again, whack them again, do the same thing. And I did that the whole way. It was perfect. Like I said, complete game changer. And I wish I would have had this conversation yesterday on the podcast on the Alabama Freshwater Report that I did yesterday, we had a guy uh, that I was interviewing, a striped fisherman in Lake Martin. Windy day yesterday, fish are schooling up in 40, 50 foot of water. And that's what he was explaining. He was like, I'm finding these fish schooling. We're getting over the top of them, trying to stay on them, working to stay on them in that wind, difficult. And then the fish are moving. We'll go find them. We'll get on. They caught 41 yesterday, striped wow. between anywhere from you know, six to 25 pounds, wore them out. But if they would have, that would have been a very good thing to talk to him about was in that windy conditions, having to stay over those fish because they're fishing vertical. This is an ideal situation for the spotlight to help them. Well, not only that too, you think about what the alternative was, they would have had to put out an anchor and how much time do you spend deploying and retrieving that anchor? But additionally, you ever tried to put out an anchor and get anchored up right over top of a piece of structure? You know, it's tough because you got to go up and say, all right, how much anchor, how much road do I have? How much do I want to deploy to get the boat positioned just right over scope? That'd be scope, Captain yes. Joe. Sorry, sorry. I forgot my captain school <laughs> lessons. Uh, you know, how much do I want to put out? Where do I need to put the boat to get my boat right over that spot? You know, I mean, you see guys back in the day be using buoys and 
Yeah. I mean, it's a pain in the butt, and it's really sure. a pain in the butt for the guy who's got to go out there and pull up that anchor, which was usually me. Yeah, and me. <laughs> so, Adam, why why the two designs? Why would you want to have, say, the Talon versus the Raptor, vice versa? Yep. So that's a really good question, and one we get all the time. Um, and nothing is going off the market. Um, so Talon is going to continue to be sold for a long, long time. Um, we actually first launched Talon in 2011. Um, and that was the initial two-stage design. In 2014, we upgraded it to a three-stage deployment. And then in 2018, we actually added Bluetooth as a network connectivity. Um, we also added an integrated work light. And we added the first 15-foot shallow water anchor. And I believe to this day, um, we continue to have the only 15-foot shallow water anchor. Um, just this last year, in 2020, we added Raptor in the 8- and 10-foot models. Um, so Talon is going to be available in 8, 10, 12, and 15 feet. Um, and Raptor is going to be 8 and 10. And from there, it's really all about choice. Um, so people um, can be comfortable with the electric option. They can be comfortable with the hydraulic option. So I know for me, I have a little bit smaller boat. I didn't really have room in, it's a 19-foot bass boat, right? So I didn't have a ton of room in my bilge to be able to put hydraulic pumps. I actually had to make um, a shelf to be able to fit that in there. And so that's one area where the talent really shines because all you have to do with the talent is hook up a negative lead and a positive lead and you're done. Um, it's a little bit more labor intensive with the wrapper. And so what you'll have there is a hydraulic pump that's actually in the bilge of the boat. Um, and that's how it's going to actuate everything. Both are really good options. Um, so I've run both of them now. The thing that I really miss or that I find myself missing about town um, is actually that dang work light. So I think that gets overlooked a lot of times in, in the buying process, but for me, you know, I fish tournaments. And so the night before I find I'm constantly rigging and that light just lights up my decks and I can see what I'm doing or in the morning before the tournament when I'm trying to get, you know, my head squared away. And then the other thing too is I have an older boat. I constantly have pumps going out. You know, I need to rewire something. And when you turn those on, it illuminates the entire bilge area. It's super helpful. Um, the other thing too is just general fishing style. So if you live up by where I do um, and you have smallmouth that bed in 14 feet of water, you probably want an anchor that's going to go 15 feet deep. If you're maybe down further south, maybe a raptor makes more sense for you. Um, or if you just feel more comfortable with the hydraulic design, that's totally okay. Um, so we really have one for everything. I think the one uh, point to make about Raptor 2 is now we've introduced two, I would say, revolutionary anchor technologies. So the first one is active anchoring, where it actually senses how it's holding into the bottom. So it measures hydraulic line pressure as it's sticking into the ground. And if that drops off, it redrives. So it won't let you, it won't let you go. Um, and there's a moment of sort of realizing that if you're like at the dock, the spike will be in the ground and step off onto the dock and the spike digs in a little bit more. You can see it and you say it's actually thinking about how well it's holding you there. The other one on active anchoring models is auto bottom. So it actually, so as you guys can imagine, you want to drive your spike differently depending on whether you're in silt or sand or rocks or, you know, if you hit a stump or whatever. So auto bottom actually determines the composition of the bottom and applies the right amount of anchoring force to make sure that you don't overdrive in muddy conditions, but make sure that you have enough hold if you're trying to hold in rocks. That is, uh, that's amazing. Butch, I'm that's just awesome thinking about like 15 feet. That's super deep. That's well, I, I mean, that gets you most places in Mobile Bay. Mm-hmm. You know, even oh. even a lot of the structure around the the oil rigs in Mobile Bay is 12, mm-hmm. 13 feet deep. And that's the place I remember having to haul the most anchors. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> I sure. I can see that being a benefit. Now, you know, the other thing I'm just thinking, Butch, you know, you've got your boat's a 16-foot War Eagle. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So it, it sounds like, Adam, like for Butch's situation where his he's fishing an aluminum boat it's you know it's kind of a uh, a hybrid duck boat slash i don't know a duck boat slash bay boat slash bass boat i mean it's kind of a do-it-all de- uh, aluminum design he's yep. probably going to be better off to go with the electric option given that would you would you say that's accurate yeah and then, so there's a couple considerations with reading so that's a really good point to bring up too so if you have a flat transom with either anchor, everything comes in the box to do a flat transom application where you can basically drill your hole holes attached to the transom and you're done. When you start to get into curved transoms, um, whether you have sponsons in the back or um, anything like that, then you have to start looking at jack plate anchors if you have a, or jack plate adapter brackets if you have a jack plate um, or sandwich brackets that would go in between the transom and the motor. 
So with an aluminum boat, I'm guessing you probably have a flat transom. I guess so. Yeah. So if you buy a town, you really you drill your four holes, put your four bolts in, connect two wires, and you're good to go. Now you're talking about the ability to sense the bottom and the you know all all those different features to make sure you're held in place. What about boat size? So I'm just thinking, man. You know, you got a 15 foot anchor. You're putting it down in 13 feet of water. You know, a lot of these guys running down in, in saltwater, we're not talking about, you know, 20 foot bass boat. We're talking, and bay boats just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. There's 26, 27 foot hybrid bay offshore boats. Guys are running offshore. They're catching their snapper, you know, and their reef fish. They're using their spot lock on their troll motor. But then they're coming back in in the afternoon or they're on days where it's too rough. They're staying inside and fishing for speckled trout and redfish. And, and that's where that, you know, that anchor pole is going to, going to, uh, going to, going to shine for them. I think, is there a boat that's too big for one of these? So I've seen yachts. Um, so I know there definitely is a boat that's too big. Uh, I would have to go back and sort of reference what the actual um, rule of thumb is, but there's a, a certain, I would say anchoring capacity of a single anchor. Um, and it's right around that 22, 23 foot mark, um, is where it starts to, I mean, potentially depending on obviously the weight, no boat is made the same. Um, so it's really going to depend, but you add another anchor, you get two of them. Um, you start to be, I mean, pretty comfortable into that 20, 29 foot range, I would say. Um, don't quote me on that. I would have to go back and check, but for most fishing applications, I would say inshore and freshwater, you're going to be absolutely okay. And even to some extent in your shore. What about, and I'm asking this for a selfish reason uh, for my, <laughs> for my own, but I got a pontoon boat. We noodle catfish out of. I'm one of them crazy guys. Me and my kids, we stick our hands in these holes catching big fish. And literally, the worst part of doing this is that you, I mean, you're moving from one boat dock to the next or from one hole to the next or box to the next. And it is literally, I mean, you know how much wind a pontoon boat catches. So, you know, you have to throw the anchor out every five minutes, pick it up every five minutes. You know, two people have to get out and hold the boat while one person checks the hole. This would be a beautiful system for any pontoon boat because, I mean, that's what guys in pontoon boats do when they're, if they're not fishing is they go gather up somewhere with a bunch of other people and throw their anchor out. Yep. So do you, is there a design that would work for a pontoon boat? So let me ask your, answer your question with another question. Brian, how many fingers do you have? I, I still have them all. I still have them all. <laughs> Come close a few times to lose them, but. <laughs> uh, so you're you're crazy for noodling, um, but if you want to go that route and you want to use your pontoon, we actually have pontoon adapter brackets um, that'll work with talent um, and wrap rope fit on there too. So you can absolutely do it. And really, I think it's uh, a good option whether you're doing it as you are. Um, and I see I see a lot of people at the sandbar having a few beverages, and a lot of times I I wonder to myself, you know, how much would those guys benefit from a shallow water anchor to you know hold their boat in place as they're enjoying the afternoon putting yeah. the anchor out is probably not it's not as much of a problem as getting it in after you've been on the <laughs> bar all day long yep, hey well, I, well hey you can, you can ask my wife she would love for me to have this just because um for safety reasons i've had this scenario where we've had people in the boat not the pontoon boat but another boat and put the anchor out fish or play or whatever we were doing and uh and then get ready to go to another spot and forget to pull the rope up and take off. And all of a sudden the anchor comes flying up out of the water and nearly decapitates the guy in the back of the boat. And I uh, kind of, kind of ruins the afternoon. So what's right. <laughs> the right. damper on things there? I would think so. There are two, I guess, ways that you would tell with a shallow water anchor too, if it was deployed. So I lied a little bit earlier when I said that town was just two wires. There's actually three. So one goes to the negative terminal, one goes to the positive terminal, and then one actually splices into your ignition. So if you turn your key of your outboard, then it'll beep at you and tell you, hey, you left your anchor down, dummy. And the other one would be with Raptor, you'll be able to visually see because it'll be deployed and you know you won't have a Raptor sticking off the back of your transom anymore. That's great. great. Stuff. Yeah, that's a great, a great design because I could easily, like you say, if with, uh, with the Talon not being able to visually see that it was down, you, it would be pretty easy to do, just take off and, and go. You know, the other thing I'm thinking about too, Brian, you're talking about noodling and, and you know, deploying, but I'm, I'm also thinking about current. 
so in situations we're kind of talking about how you know what's right for butch in uh in foul river alabama may not be right for brian on the river doing some noodling the, the setup might not be the same for the for the two of them what about guys that are dealing with a lot of current we get a lot of guys on the freshwater side that are fishing tail races around dams and things like that you know on the saltwater side it just kind of comes and goes with regards to current is there either or option that you need to think about if, if current is a factor if you deal with a lot of current yeah. Um, so great question. And I think, so from a shallow water anchor perspective, that absolutely holds you in current. I have no question about it. The one thing to maybe think about is if you're trying to choose between spot lock and a shallow water anchor, again, recommend having both of them on your boat, but as you're going to fish current, so I think there's a couple ways to think of it. If you want to, like I was talking about before, nose up towards where the current's coming at your face, um, that's a great spot lock scenario. Um, the one thing that spot lock isn't going to do for you um, is if you're trying to fish perpendicular to the current, say over a, a wing dam or a closing dam or something like that. And so you can be on, I would say, a, a river system. And in the same day, you may say spot lock is the perfect tool to be able to pick apart an entire length of, you know, something where you're going with current at your face. But if you want to go run wing dams and fish 20 of them in a day, then shallow water anchors are probably going to outperform for you there. And Butch, man, I could see that being perfect, especially Mobile Bay. I mean, those bass guys down there, it is all about the tidal flow, and that's current. And and that's what they key on, and they're fishing current when they're catching fish. They're yeah. in the current. For sure. It's all about the movement. And the other thing that I would add, just from a current perspective um, with Raptor, is, again, active anchoring. So I would say a lot of traditional anchoring methods, if the current picks up a little bit or, you know, with your tide, if it raises up then it might potentially wash you down a little bit with a raptor with active anchoring. It's going to continue to redrive. It's not really going to let you get going off your spot. You know, we've talked about the bigger boats and the pontoon boats and those scenarios, but let's go completely the opposite direction. It, kayak fishing has is, is become a, a major new way to fish. I mean, we've got kayak tournaments all over the state of Alabama and all over the South, probably all over the country. But, Talk to us about options that you have if you're a kayak guy. Absolutely. Do you have shallow water anchors for kayaks, or is it, or is it more so just spot lock option? So I would tell you, um, shallow water anchors for kayaks do exist. We at Minkota don't make one today. Um, without uh, saying any more than that, I would say we don't necessarily have an option for you in that regard. But what we do have is um, a partnership with Old Town Canoe. And kayak so they just actually launched earlier in the year um one i cast best in show for their autopilot kayak um, and it actually has a minkota motor built into it so i've always said the the toughest thing about kayak fishing is that you have to take your hands off the pole to paddle um, and that can be frustrating um, and i think pedal kayaks came a long way to helping anglers do that, but there's still some level of navigation that you have to do, you know, with your hands and feet and coordinate and everything. Um, there really is no better boat control for a kayak than a Minn Kota trolling motor. And so we've integrated it, gives you the power of spot lock in a kayak, um, gives you all the features that we talked about before, um, where you can go to waypoints, um, you know, replay tracks and all of that. Um, and you don't really have to worry about it. So again, we put the focus back on fishing. And I would say we really have noticed a, a huge insurgence of outdoor recreation, particularly, you know, the small boat, canoe, kayak folks. Um, just look at, you know, the, the bass tournaments with kayaks, even, you know, bass ministry of the tournament trail this year. I don't think, you know, that's just a flash in the pan. I think this is indicative of a pretty large movement of people wanting to get outside um, and kind of experience the outdoors in that way for themselves. Oh, I, I completely agree. You know, Adam, this is probably a dumb question, but why always on the stern? I mean, your trolling motor's on the bow. Why do we want to have that pole anchor on the stern? I mean, you hardly ever want to anchor a boat from the stern. It's very limited applications for doing that with a traditional <laughs> traditional anchor. So why why are they always on the stern with the pole anchor? Uh, so great, not a stupid question at all. The biggest thing is um, there's two of them, right? So one of them is engineering design and the other one is just um, making sure that it's fishable. So the first one is if you think about a shallow water anchor and how it's designed, so it's going to stick up um, some portion of the time, um, whether it's deployed or not. 
And so if you put it on the bow of the boat, you'll have an obstruction when you're casting. Obviously don't want that. But the other thing too is when you think about um, whether you are using spot lock in your trolling motor or anchoring from shallow water anchor in the back, um, you basically get the option of if you want to face into the wind or if you want to face, you know, with the wind, um, you get to choose whether you're anchoring from the stern or from the bow. Um, and that'll basically allow you to decide which way you want to orient yourself with the wind. So the, uh, the, the bonus question here, because um, I feel like you're going to ask it too, is why, why get two shallow water anchors and not just one? Um, so the idea behind this is a single point you're going to spin um, pretty much no matter what um, when you're anchored like that. Um, or at the very least, you're going to orient where the anchor point is going towards the wind in your face. When you put two, you actually get to choose the orientation of the bow of the boat. Um, and so that allows you to just make more precise boat control decisions. The one thing I'll say is that if you do have a single shallow water anchor um, and a trolling motor that has autopilot, you can decide where the bow of your boat is going to actually point. So if you put your shallow water anchor down and you point your trolling motor's autopilot setting in the direction of where you want to go, so it's you would think you would be able to use spot lock with it, but that's really not the case um, because spot lock is going to try and go forward and back also. But if you take autopilot, point it in the direction where you want the bow to go um, and put your shallow water anchor down, then the trolling motor is going to keep the nose pointed um, and try and work against the force of the shallow water anchor so that you'll actually be able to go um, and point it 360 degrees wherever you want to go and you'll still have that anchor point in the back of the boat. So that's a little bonus for all your listeners there. Yeah, awesome. Nice. Yeah, it's all about being able to just control your boat better and Total, easy, yep. easier, really, no doubt. Well, Adam, man, it's been uh, it's been good. I feel like we've covered what we wanted to cover and and really kind of see the pros and the cons and and the situations where these things are going to uh, benefit anglers. Hopefully, just have you help you have a better day on the water, help you catch more fish. If folks want to, you know, get to know the different products that that you guys have, also kind of maybe really sounds like the thing they need to do is they need to think about their type of fishery, their type of applications and, uh, and go online and, and find the best fit for them. And also the type of boat they're running. Uh, a lot of the things we talked about today for our own unique situations, where, where should they go online if they want to make this decision? Yep. So great question. So anybody who wants to learn more about uh, either shallow water anchors or Minkota trolling motors, go to www.minkotamotors.com. And under technology, you can actually go into a buying guide. So there's one for motors, there's one for shallow water anchors. And it's actually going to explain the pros and the cons um, of each lineup um, so that you can just make the best decision um, of how you want to rig your boat based on your specific fishing needs or specific setup and kind of what your goals are as a fisherman. Well, Adam, it's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for joining us. And uh, hopefully we can uh, be talking to you again soon. I'm, I'm excited to see you. You guys keep uh, keep innovating, and uh, you know I, I really like when you talked about in sixteen you did this, in seventeen you did this, and eighteen you did this, and uh, it's just going to be fun to see what you guys come out with next. Appreciate you joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me. Well, Butch, are you any more clear on your decision here? Uh, what'd you learn from today? Uh, I learned that there are a lot of options, and I probably need a talent, man. I guess I'm just going to run it for a little while longer because I literally just got the boat and see if there's applications where i'm like dang it i should have had that talent on you know so mm -hmm. yeah it definitely sounds like the talent is better fit for you over the raptor because of the of not, the lack of hydraulics and for just sure. the ease of just bolt on use and you know I, I just go back to i always go back to what bobby's you know has told us whenever we've been fishing with him he's like i didn't know i needed it until i had it now i can't yep. imagine life without it and uh no doubt that, right. That's it, man. And, and fishing has changed. I was thinking about this during the, the podcast while, you know, while we, we had Adam on is how much fishing has changed over the last 20 years with just advances in technology and things to just make it easier and better. And it's like you just said, Joe, you're like, man, do I really need that? I mean, I've been fishing for 20 years without it, but then once you get it, it's like, man, I'd rather leave my fish. I I won't even go without it now, whether it's, game changer. whether it's, it's a game changer, whether it's of the, your electronics or whether it's a talent system or, uh, or spot lock. I mean, it's, it's game changers. Yep. No really doubt. Is. Well, folks, I sure hope you've enjoyed the show and I hope it's making, you know, your decision easier. Uh, if you're in the market for setting up a boat with a shallow water anchor system, whatever that may be, definitely get over and check out the Minkota website and take a look at their, their guide. I, I think it'll really help you if, if you've got a unique scenario and, 
and all the different factors that go into your decision. We, uh, we definitely wish you guys the, the happiest Thanksgiving, and uh, we'll be looking to talk to you again next week. Y'all stay safe out there. Keep whacking them, guys. This week's fishing report has been brought to you by Great Days Outdoors magazine. If you're frustrated with typical hunting and fishing magazines and tired of reading content, then for guys that are up in the north or up in the Midwest, check out Great Days Outdoors magazine. Don't get left behind following the guidance of guys who don't fish or hunt in your home state. You can pick up a Great Days Outdoors magazine subscription and it will help you become a better southern outdoorsman. Great Days Outdoors magazine can be found at your local Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Tractor Supply Company, Rural King, Bass Pro Shops, or you can save online at greatdaysoutdoors.com.